Hi guys, welcome to another video of Sunday School. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we come before you and we are thankful that you are God, you are in control. No matter how crazy life is and the world seems and what's going on around us, we can trust you completely. We thank you that you are completely in control and that you are walking with us. We ask that you be with those who are sick Help them to get better. Keep us all healthy, Lord. We ask that you be with those who are grieving loss, that you would be with them, be their comforter, because you are the great comforter, Lord. And we ask that you be with our country right now, Father, and help us to be a light to those around us, that that light might spread, that your love and your light might spread to those around us. Help us to be an encouragement to those around us. Lord, I ask that you help us to focus on our on our lesson today, on your word, and teach us something new about who you are and who we are in you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, let's start by thinking about rules. In your classroom, when you are in person, you probably have some class rules and probably some consequences for breaking those rules. The rules in your classroom might look something like this. Be respectful, be prepared for class, keep hands, feet, and objects to yourself, raise your hand to speak, and be your best. Why do teachers make these rules? It's because we want things to go smoothly, right? If there was no rules, then it would be chaos. If everyone didn't wait to raise their hands to speak, then everyone would be interrupting each other. We keep hands, feet, and objects to ourselves so that we're not hurting others. We're prepared so that we can make the most of our learning time. That's why we would have these rules, because the teacher wants what's best for you. When there are rules that are broken, you probably have some consequences. If you're at your school, you might have a phone call home to mom and dad. You might have to miss some recess, or you might have to go to see the principal if you're not following the rules, if you're hurting somebody or doing something where the rules are not being followed. Even adults have to follow rules. There are laws put in place, like speeding laws, where we can't speed, and if I were to get pulled over for going too fast, the police officer would issue a consequence, a ticket, with a fine that I would have to pay, right? So even adults have to pay consequences when they break the rules. These are some rules that God gave Moses to share with the Israelites. Why do you think God gave these rules? Because he loves us and wants what's best for us. That's why. And like there's consequences with rules in your classroom. And if you disobey uh, rules in the country and in the world, there's consequences for disobeying God. And he shared that with the Israelites too. In a moment, I want you to pause the video. Go look for some Play-Doh. If you have some Play-Doh at home, I want you to make a, a two stone tablet just like these. And I want you to, if you have room on them, use a toothpick to kind of etch in some of the rules that God gave to the Israelites. These are the 10 commandments. No other gods before me. Do not worship other graven images. Never use God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Love, honor your father and mother. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not covet. Those are the rules that God gave the Israelites. Now pause the video and use some Play-Doh and use a toothpick to write in your Play-Doh stone tablets, 
one or more of the commandments that God gave the Israelites. Go ahead and pause now. Now the Israelites were traveling through the desert and they arrived at the base of Mount Sinai. Moses went up to speak with God. And in Exodus 19 verse 5, God promised to make Israel his special treasure to himself above all other people if they would obey his voice and keep his commandments. Moses came down the mountain and told them his message. And then Moses went back up the mountain. The mountain shook. The thunder roared. There was smoke billowing from the top of the mountain. When he went back up, that's when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Let's look at the first four on the left side in this picture. The first one, have no other gods. The second one, no idols, like the Egyptians worshipped other idols. Number three, don't use God's name as a swear word. Take care of his name. Don't use it in a careless way. Number four, set aside a special day each week to worship him. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. All of these show us how to love God, how we should love God. We should put him first and set the Sabbath apart to worship him. Have you ever had trouble keeping the first four commandments? Any of them? The first two, if you put anything above God, you're not keeping those commandments. Things can take the place of God. Technology, money, um, video games, or anything like that. Can Anything we put first over God can become an idol and something we worship. So we need to think about that. What about, have you ever heard someone using God's name in vain? saying OMG in a text or saying the Lord's name in vain in conversation like it's no big deal. Well, how do you think God feels when someone says, oh my God, but they're not talking about him. They're using his name as a swear word. I don't think that makes him happy. In fact, the Ten Commandments tells us that we shouldn't do that. What about... On a Sunday, maybe you're tired and don't feel like going to church. You just rather stay home. You don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to get up and go. It's a long drive. To be there a long time, you might not want to be there. Sometimes we feel that way. But we need to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And that should be a day that is important. And even though we'll be tempted... Maybe at times to not want to keep the Sabbath and keep it holy, we need to obey God there too. Well, the first four commandments tell us how we should act towards God. And the next six talk about how we should treat others. Number five, love and obey your father and mother. Number six, do not kill Number seven, do not take another person's husband or wife. Do not commit adultery. Number eight, do not steal. Number nine, do not lie about anyone. Even a little white lie that seems to be maybe harmless. It's not obeying God. Do not want what, other belo what belongs to others. Don't covet what other people have. God showed Moses and the Israelites how to act towards him and towards each other in these Ten Commandments. When the Israelites heard these rules, they promised to obey. God himself carved the rules out onto two stone tablets and gave them to Moses. 
Now Moses had been on the mountain for 40 days. And the Israelites got a little impatient and worried about Moses. Was he okay? Was he still alive? Their worry and their impatience led them to do something awful. They asked Aaron, Moses' brother, to make them a god to worship. Oh no! God had just told them the rules 40 days earlier, and now they were asking Aaron for false idols to worship. Aaron, instead of leading them back into God's rules, he asked them for all of their gold jewelry. He took all of their gold rings, their gold necklaces, and melted the gold down into a liquid. And then he turned it into a calf, a golden cow. And they said, this is the God that brought you out of Egypt. And they were singing and dancing and bowing down to it. What? No one is worthy of worship except for God. They gave credit to the cow for leading them out of Egypt. But the cow had nothing to do with it. They were giving God's credit to a lump of gold. God got so upset, he tells Moses to go down to see what they're doing. So Moses goes down the mountain. He's so God is so angry with the Israelites. He wanted to wipe them out. But Moses pleads for their lives and reminds God of his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so, because Moses pleaded to God on their behalf, Moses didn't wipe out, or God did not wipe out the Israelite people that day. When Moses got down and saw them worshiping the calf, he threw down the tablets that God himself had written on and broke them. Aaron tried to say that this just came out of the fire, which was a lie. Aaron had carved it into a calf. Now God sent a plague of judgment because of their disobedience. What I hope you take from today's lesson is that God has given us some rules to follow for our own good. He loves us and wants what's best for us, and we need to do our best to follow his rules. We're going to fail. We're going to mess up. But we need to try to follow him. We need to know what his rules are and do our best to follow what he wants us to do because it's for our good and the good of those around us. He loves us and wants what's best for us. Have a great week and I will see you guys next time. Bye.